curve can be used to calculate uh, probabilities for the standard normal, normal random variable z, that is the normal with mean zero and standard deviation one. How do we actually accomplish that? For example, suppose I wanted to calculate the probability that the random variable z is less than 1.22. In other words, z is a standard normal, a normal with mean zero and standard deviation one. How do you do that? That's where the standard normal table comes in. And the standard normal table has these values of z tabled. So if I want to know, and they also give you the probability that z is less than whatever the value is. They're tabled as cumulative probabilities. In other words, um, when you look up a z, what you're really finding is a probability that z is less than whatever that value is. So they're tabled as cumulative probabilities. It's actually this part of the table that I need for that particular number though, so I'm going to move it. So all I would do is look up um, 1.22 in this table. And the way you do that is you go down the the rows until you get to 1.2 that's this row here and then you move over the column headings are the uh, hundreds place so it's 1.2 1.20 1.21 1.22 1.23 and so on all the way to 1.29 and I'm looking for 1.22 so that's 0, 1, 2 so that is the tabled value, and the probability is 0.8888. So the probability that z is less than 1.22 is simply 0.8888. Now, of course, if the probability you're looking for is not a less than, you have to work slightly harder because the table doesn't give greater thans. So if I ask you what's the probability with a standard normal that z is say greater than 1.22 you'd start off pretty much the same way. You'd look up 1.22 and since I've already done that I'll just refer to it again. It's 0.8888 but that's not the answer. The fact of the matter is the total area under a normal curve is uh, 1. So if I'm looking for the area to the right and the table gives me the area to the left, what I have to realize is that any greater than value is equal to 1 minus the corresponding less than value. And so truly I do look up uh, 1.22 and write down 0.8888 but I subtract it from 1 in order to get my final answer. And so you can take your calculator if you like and you calculate 1 minus 0.8888 and you get 0.1112. So if it's a less than problem, you can look it up in the table directly. If it's a greater than problem, you have to say 1 minus. Quite often we're also interested in problems where you're looking for the probability that a random variable is between two things. So for instance, you might have uh, a random variable, a, nor a standard normal random variable, and you might want to know the probability that uh, z is between, let's say, negative 0.8 and let's just use 1.22 again since we've looked that up before. How do you calculate a probability like that? Well, if you looked at the um, discussion we had earlier about um, the area under the normal curve and what it represented, you'll remember 
that if you look up a certain z value, say b, you get the probability that it's less than that. That's everything from here on back. But that's not what I'm looking for when I'm doing a between. I just want this area here. So I have to find out this area that's less than a and subtract it off. So what I end up doing is looking up the b value first, the z equal to b. Whatever I get there gives me all of this. And then I'll look up the a value, which gives me everything to the left, that white area, and I subtract, and that leaves me with the area between, which is what I'm looking for. So if I want to calculate the probability that z is between uh, negative 0.8 and 1.22, I simply look up 1.22, and I've already looked that up, I'm not going to do it again, it turns out to be 0.8888, I did that just a minute ago. And then I look up the leftmost number, which is negative 0.8, and I haven't done that one yet, so let's do that now. If I look up negative 0.8 in the table, I go to negative 0.8, and I just keep looking down until I find it, and there it is right there, negative 0.8. And since it's negative 0.8, 0, I just go to the column heading at the top that says 0, 0. So I'm actually looking for negative 0 0.80, and so I get this answer right here, which is in fact 0.2119. 0.2119. And then because I'm trying to find the difference, I subtract. 18 minus 9 is 9, 7 minus 1 is 6, 8 minus 1 is 7, and 8 minus 2 is 6. And so the answer is 0.76, uh, excuse me, 0.6769. And then to sort of wrap up this um, set of simple examples, suppose you were giving a, a normal random variable that wasn't standard normal. Uh, it's this standard, uh, this, this random variable is normal with a mean of 1400 and a standard deviation of 50. And I think you can already answer this. If I want to know the probability that x was between 1330 and 1465, what you realize, I think, is that you first have to normalize it. You have to change the x to a z. And we've talked about how to do this in the past. All you do is subtract off the mean and divide by the standard deviation. So you find, the, you know the mean is 1400, so you subtract off the mean. You've got to do it on both sides because you've got a between and then you divide by the standard deviation. Standard deviation is 50, so you divide by 50. And then do the arithmetic. Okay, if you do the arithmetic here, you end up with 1330 minus 1400, which is negative 70 over 50. And then 1465 minus 1400, comes out to be 65, so you end up with 65 over 50. And then uh, just use your calculator to change those to decimals, and that gives you the probability that z is between negative 0.14 and positive 1.3. Now you're back to a z value, so you do it just as, if, just as you did before. In other words, to continue once you get a z, all you have to do is look up the rightmost value. Look up the value on the right in the table, 1.3, and then look up the left value, which is negative 1.4 in the table, and then you subtract the two. So if I look up 1.3 in the table, I go to the table and I go down to the 1.3 and since it's 1.30 I just go to the column labeled 0 so I go 1.30 and 1.30 make sure yeah that's not going to go 1.30 is 0.9032 so I copy down 0.9032 
Then I go to the table and look up negative 1.4. Okay, negative 1.4, I go to negative 1.4 in the Z column. And since I'm looking for negative 1.40, if I'm looking for negative 1.41, I'd go there. 0.2, I'd go there. But I'm looking for just negative 1.40. So I go there. And that's 0 0.0808. So I copy down 0 0.0808. And then I subtract. And what I end up with is 0.8. Two, two, four. So the probability that X is between 1330 and 1465 is a little over 82%. And that's how you approach these problems. Of course, you can have word problems and things can get a little more complicated, but basically that's the approach. And if you know the basics, uh, the rest is just working your way up and practicing a lot.